Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Today we're going to be doing some more crab sites. Concord Rogue Analysis Beacon Sites, the kind of rogue drone new kind of ratting for capital ships that was released not so long ago. This is then going to be again in the Phoenix, but I'm trying a slightly different fit than I did last time. Last time I used a fit with very minimal tank. Now I'm going to be using a more solid fit in terms of tank. I'm putting these dual C-type multi-spectrums and a shield boost amplifier. And I found that before I had to use my uh, like capacitor booster a lot, but this time we're going to be going with the shield boost amplifier and the two multi-spectrums. I think it will just overall make our like uh, shield boosting a lot more efficient because without all of these modules, we were still able to tank them. It's just that we had to use our capacitor booster a lot, but this will sort of effectively make us get more tank per like gigajoule by having all these mod extra modules right here. So I removed some application modules like missile guidance computers and I felt like they were a bit unnecessary because we've got already two missile guidance enhancers plus a Rigor and a Flare Catalyst. So I felt like it was a bit unnecessary with all the stacking penalties. So I just kept the two target painters because they're not really going to stack together with all these other modules right here. And I'm not using any implants. And I think that like, okay, it's a little bit of bling, you know, C-type, X-type, shield boost amplifier, but all these, this three, these three modules together, I don't think they cost more than a billion and in the perspective of like how expensive dreadnoughts are it isn't actually a lot so here we're going to be probably trying to do this a bit more comfortable style i want to see how it feels maybe they've made some changes to the site as well i want to see how i'm like i'm most interested in seeing how much isk we can get from this how quick it is to get isk and what we can expect from capital ship parts Another thing I also did from last time is I bought some skill injectors on the test server and I injected myself to Kaldari Dreadnought level 4. So I've got a bit better skills right now with the Siege module. I have 5k DPS, but I'm sure you could get a lot more if you had like implants and even more skills than what I've got right now. But either way, let's get started. I've got the capacitor boosters and the strontium clathrates before I forgot to take them because I'm just such a complete noob when it comes to capital ships. So we're going to launch for self and get to work. We'll activate our multi-spectrums. And we can activate siege, siege module as soon as the rogue drones start spawning. A bit of time until they're gonna spawn in right here. But I felt like application was pretty good last time, even with the rage torpedoes. Okay, begin link. A few more minutes. Like the thing is we are application was pretty decent even when when we had this all those modules before and i felt like those two missile guidance computers they're like making our signature radius smaller on the missiles and we already got like regal flare and these missile guidance enhances the stacking penalties are going to make them do so little so that's why i just opted out for just putting this tank modules and i think it'll go it'll be hardly any difference in terms of application and we'll just overall have a more relaxing time it could be that they've buffed the sites that make them a bit more like you know harder because i felt many people were telling me at least before that they were quite easy before it felt easy seeing me with only level one in kaldari dreadnought without any tank modules able to actually get through these sites i don't know we'll see um I think the main thing that is something to worry about here is players, to be honest. I'm doing this on the test server because on the real server, I don't have any like, capital ship skills trained. And I also, like uh, Corporation Brave, it's not like the best situation right now to do these. And my, my stuff is not moved in the best situation as well. So I'll see how it goes. But I definitely would want to do this stuff in the future, like on the real server, when I actually get into capital ships or one day when I get into capital ships. I've been mainly focusing on subcap skills so far. You can see here, when we train these skill levels, we get shield resistant bonuses. So, plus that, and the two multi spectrums. And then we've got also this uh, Concord Rogue Analysis Beacon boasts our resistances as well. We get really good resists. And this shield boost amplifier is just making a straight up boost a lot more shields as well. So, here, 5.4k HP per second. A lot of shields. The smart bomb, I think, I don't think it's at all necessary. I just happened to have it there, but may as well could have kept it off. I've seen the from these sites, or at least I think it is from these sites. You can get these uh, rogue drone um, drone damage amplifier mutaplasmids. It's called like a radical radical drone damage amplifier mutaplasmid. I think these are very special because they can boost the drone damage amplifiers, and it'll be very good for gealers in the abyss. Thing is, they're quite rare. Or at least they seem to be quite rare because I checked in Jita, they were like a billion or something like that each. And I mean, what if you brick the module? What if you make the module worse? Then, I mean, may as well buy an officer module, to be honest, because you can get the cheap drone damage amplifier, like quote unquote cheap. 
uh, like low tier officer drone damage amplifiers. I think for one or two billion, something like that. I think you would may as well go for those, to be honest. Two, one, linked. Okay. Where are these rogue drones going to spawn in soon? Oh, we have this big circle here. It's like an arena almost. <laughs> calling in rogue drones, calling in rogue drones. The rogue drones do not like us doing research on their species. Nine minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, we can see this in the overview now because I added this overview. There we go. Something here. We can go with the siege module. Lockity lock. Time to wreak havoc. Oh, take a wrecking shot right there, but it's all right. I can already feel that our tank is so good now. Like the skills that I had, plus the multi spectrums are just making us take very, like our shields are taking a long time to get through. Where's our range and our torpedo? 74 kilometers? Yeah, boof, this guy stands no chance. Takes a bit of time for them to hit because I can notice that it took a very, there was a very big delay on the damage. Dual target painters? Yeah, this seems really good right here, really good. So we started now at 07, 907. We'll see what isk we get when we're done with this. I'm just ticking down. So I guess it's good when you don't have any NPC spawning in. It's a bit random when the NPC spawn in. Sometimes you can just get through this time a lot quick. Because when this 10 minute time is finished, then you're done. Okay, there we go. Now there's more NPCs right here. Locked. It's a bit annoying when they've just warped in. You can't lock them up properly. There we go. And let's see how boosts. Let's see how much boost we get. Oh, let's see that. All that damage just recovered instantly almost. Infested Interrupter Omnicron. Okay, so they've got different names now, at least. It's quite cool how they've got these, like, Abaddon Rogue Drone ships. Quite unique. I've not seen them before in, like, NPCs and that kind of stuff. Or the Ratting Anomalies. But again, I don't feel like these NPCs are supposed to be the main threat. It's supposed to be the players. Because I can imagine if you're in a Nullsec region and you've got, like, you know, enemy players roaming around, you probably would want to have a big fleet with you to defend you. And you could all get like a cut of the loot or something like that. I'm not sure. I mean, I can imagine what people, some people would do is be in these really, really like deserted places of null seconds. Do them there in like relative safety. I've I remember seeing on the Eve Online Reddit that a lot of people were doing these in drone lands, like really in these abandoned areas of null sec. I don't know. That could be an option to do these efficiently. Because the thing is, I okay. Yeah, these could give good loot, but you're also using very expensive ships, so it's like a really delicate like risk to reward thing. Because if you you can't really afford to lose these consistently, otherwise you're just not gonna really turn out in any profit. Since the loss bales for these capital ships are just gonna be so big. I guess you have the insurance as well, but still, the loss bales are just gonna be so big that it's not really gonna be worth it. So you really have to find a way to do these relatively consistently to not get caught to really turn out in a profit because how much does this whole dread cost we can check how much it costs right now in jita so this whole like dread here or not in jita because you can't buy capital ships in jita but so you know about six to seven billion isk six to seven billion isk okay so you're gonna have to really farm a lot of these depending on how much isk i'm not sure how much isk you can get from these but i feel like you're gonna have to farm a lot of these to really even break even and that's gonna be like, assuming you don't even get killed once or if you get killed twice is it gonna be completely not worth it so i think you're gonna have to be very tactical with your d scan very tactical having friends around with intel and all that kind of stuff to do these in relative safety i think another alternative could be to use a carrier i've not got any fighter skills trained so it's not really <laughs> it's not really my thing here but i could perhaps like try buying some skill injectors and seeing how it works if i have enough skill points to spare for some basic fighter skills um because the thing is if you're in a i think if you're in a carrier you could just align out all the time and then you would be able to just like warp out if someone's here uh, I don't know. it could also be that it's not as effective because it's maybe hard to get as good tank on carriers. I've not used so many carriers, so it's hard for me to say. In fact, I've never flown a carrier. <laughs> but at least there you're not stuck like the Dreadnought, you know, with the Siege module. It's a lot different when you're in that carrier. Those first initial minutes, obviously, you're stuck because of the deploying of this. But after that, when you're using the Siege module, then you're stuck here for a good five minutes all the time. You can maybe put like a PvP fit and then you could just attack. 
people who attack you, but I can imagine people who hunt these guys are going to be very prepared, going to come with lots of artillery and just blap you before you're able to even do anything. But I think probably carriers would be an alternative to this since you wouldn't have, like, as much risk in terms of getting caught since you could stay aligned out. But I don't know, maybe there's some caveat to that that you have, it would be able to, it'd be hard to warp out or something. You could just align to a citadel, warp if something comes. Hmm. You guys who are running these on Tranquility, how do you actually run them? Let me know, because I'm quite curious. Because I think this will definitely be something I'll be interested to do in the future when I got the capital skills train, but um, right now is uh, I've not got those skills. I think that it will be an interesting activity because you just I, 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 I like the idea of flying around in a capital ship and actually put, doing some activity that is worth in it. Because I was so used to having always seeing capital ships like the carriers and that kind of stuff doing these like, uh, havens and that kind of stuff that's made for these anomalies that are made for the lower tier ships or the sub capital ships it's not it doesn't feel it felt very strange because you're just annihilating those anomalies so quickly it didn't feel like it was made for it but the, here i don't think any sub caps will be able to do this even if there were you have to have a, have a capital ships to be able to deploy these i think but even then i think that a sub cap wouldn't be able to even survive here because there'll just be too much dps the amount of dps you've got going on here is really big really big there's a lot of em and thermal damage i'm noticing so it could be that there's a bias to EM and thermal damage, maybe? So it always seems to be EM and thermal damage in this wave. I might have seen them having explosive before. But I think that this is like, the, the way this site works is that it is very similar to how I expected the capital anomalies or new kind of capital ratting to be. Because I've felt that it would be cool if there's something that sort of keeps you in place that puts you at risk. Because it's sort of like the abyssal sites are the same way. Like, you uh, got that Abyssal Trace in space, people can just go in there and get you uh, when, you're, uh, when you've launched your Abyssal Trace. So I was thinking that could be something similar for uh, the capital ships as well, where you're sort of in place and sort of as somewhat at risk. So that you have to think a bit about how much you're doing or how much farming you're doing or take into consideration who is around. You have some people scout out for you. I was I like the idea of having all these waves come in here. Like in the mass waves. Five minutes, thirty-five seconds. You know, start reloading actually. And I've got a lot of bounties. I've got a lot of bounties. See each uh, ship is like two to four million, something like that. They die so quickly in a five K DPS Phoenix. But the tank is really smooth here, damn smooth. I'm not even having to use any like capacitor boosters because of how like cap efficient our shield booster is because like we're getting more shield like HP per second per like gigajoule because we've got these multi spectrums improving our resists the shield boost amplifier is straight up giving us more shield boosting before we had to use so much shield boosting that we always had to use our capacitor booster but now we barely have to we just have to pulse it a bit and that's enough that's enough it's just, that's how good these extra modules are so I'm really glad that I put these modules here it was actually a viewer I can't remember who it was but there was a viewer who suggested to put the multi spectrums and just upgrade the tank a bit and uh, i'm definitely glad i did this here it feels a lot smoother a lot lot smoother like i'm barely having to even boost just have a couple of cycles it feels like when i'm in the golem and i just give a few boosts and then just suddenly my shields poop are all to max hp got some newts here i wonder if they can have scrams i've not encountered any scrams but this is the f i feel like this is the first time i'm seeing a newt so I mean, I wouldn't be surprised then if they're going to be carrying some scrams with them. If they're able to carry newts, it seems reasonable to assume that they would be carrying some form of scrams as well that would hold you in place. That could kind of be something that would be able to make so that, you know, carriers who are aligned out all the time would not be able to easily just go away. They'd have to focus on the scrambling guys. Oh, look at these guys. They're very far away. One, two, three, and four. I think four is enough. And then have like this. Let's see if we start shooting a little bit on this guy. With four volleys enough for this guy? Yeah, I think so. Yep, there. Then we'll put the target page on this guy here. They're going very quick. Look at that. 1337. Leet. <laughs> Leet speed on this infested disruptor tower. <laughs> it's got a fun speed right there. Three million just in a few seconds from those guys. And then plus we can get the loot from here when this thing explodes when we're done with this. 
We'll get even more loot. So it's very good bounties. I'm like this when we see these good bounties here. They're not as many NPCs. You know, we're not. It feels like a lot of the time we're just sitting here doing nothing. When you come to these like erratic anomalies in all sec, like the havens, for example, you're just shooting all the time. So even though the bounties are less, but I still feel like it sort of equals out a bit. Here, yeah, like, okay, it's good bounties, but a lot of the time we're just sitting here doing nothing. And there's not as many NPCs in the grid either, so they just die pretty quickly. Infested Corruptor Sigma. Can we see any info about these guys? Any info, 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 info? Mjolnir. Hmm. I think Thermal would have been the best idea, actually. I should have gone for that. I'm using it. just happened to be using the... Or Kinetic, even. Is it kinetic or Thermal? Might be good Thermal, to be honest. But next time we can go with Thermal. It was a bit of a mistake on my part. I think we established that last time that Thermal would be a bit more optimal. Oh, no. Look here. Here, the Explosive or EM would probably be better. I guess it just varies from NPC to NPC, a bit of Omni style. Uh, CCP Games seems to be doing that a lot nowadays with having NPCs a bit, a bit more Omni damage coming in and having to deal a bit more Omni damage, like especially in the Abyss. It makes it a lot more challenging because many of the DED sites, you know, you can have in high sec and that kind of stuff, oh, in low, in low sec as well. Um, it's all the same NPC, all the same resists. You tank very easily by having a really good particular resist and do a lot of DPS by having a particular damage type on your ship as well. I mean, it spices stuff up a bit, makes it not easy to just have a bit of a cookie cutter fit. A bit more interesting kinds of fits. Reload. I like that I'm using the rapid <laughs> torpedo launchers because I don't think, like, I don't think I have to. No, I don't have to have like capital ship skills to be able to use this, because it seems to be just like a like you know the rapid lights. Where you just have the light missile skills, but you're able to use like a medium based weapon or rapid heavies, where you're able to just have heavy missiles trained, be able to use a battleship sized weapon. And I think these are the most one of the most optimal uh, types of weapon systems for these because you're applying so good with the because uh, it's like a it's a battleship sized weapon. This is on a capital ship, so we're applying a lot better than a capital ship weapon would be. I was initially thinking of using a revelation for these, but I feel like the application would be just too bad. The application would definitely be too bad. I've at least seen people on the EVE Online Reddit saying that, and it was exactly how I suspected that the application will be bad on turret-based weapons. Maybe the Nagelfar, because Nagelfar, I think, will have better tracking to, to like the projectile-based weaponry. They tend to have a bit better tracking than other types of weaponry, but... A lot of this small stuff, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm just sitting around trying to kill them and don't do any damage. I mean, you don't have drones, it's not like a Marauder where you have a few little light drones you could use to compensate for when you're not able to hit them when all those small frigates here. It'll just waste a lot of time, I think. And the thing that's really great as well is that between waves, like we've got now, we can sort of reload or save a lot of reload time. Because one thing with the rapid lights and rapid heavies, rapid torpedoes, etc., that is a bit of a downside is that the reload time is so long. Um, when I'm using them in the Abyss, I could use like a Cerberus with rapid lights. Oh, it applies so good. There's a lot of damage for a bit of time, but then you have to wait a good, what was that, 30, 40 seconds or something like that for the reload to go. And you're facing NPCs almost all the time. Here, it's a bit like in the intervals. So you're having this bit of a dead time where you can use it to reload and you save a lot of time in that way and a lot of DPS is saved in that regard. Because if we had like a capital torpedoes, the XL torpedoes, then they would be just sitting here doing nothing in, the, in between the waves. I think it's very, very, very optimal to use these rapid torpedo launches but maybe fighters would be probably good as well where they would be applying very good but i'm not sure how the fighter aggro works because i wouldn't be surprised if these rogue drones go crazy on fighters and drones and that kind of stuff because all this new content that ccp tends to release it tends to have very high drone aggro like events abyss and i i just have a feeling that in general rogue drones they are a little bit more aggressive to your own kinds of drones in the abyss the little rogue drone frigates are nightmares for my drones in the gila so i think that they won't have a good time but if any of you guys have run these in carriers solo or just in carriers in general are the, are the application is the application uh decent with the fighters and do they go crazy on your fighters <laughs> i wonder how i would go because it feels like that would be a lot safer than using this dreadnought right here but I think the Dreadnought is definitely going to be faster. Definitely going to be faster than the carriers because the sheer amount of DPS we're able to field right here. And it's also applied pretty decently well. Uh, just annihilating these guys without any issue. And this smart bomb is just a waste of space, to be honest. I don't even need this. Tank is just amazing. Look at that.
Our capacity is just so good. We didn't have, we've not even had to use a single cat booster. If you watched the last video I did, the first test I ever did in this, in a Phoenix, I was having to use this constantly. In fact, I ran out of capacitor boosters because I didn't pack enough in my cargo bay. I didn't know that the there's like this special fleet hangar bay where you could carry extra amount of capacitor boosters. So it was uh, not a good time. I had to uh, warp out. But here, I'm not even having to use a single one pulsing my shield boosters. Really great, really great. Love it. And I could have better skills. Uh, I think I could also have like better skills because my capital shield skills are really bad. Like I've only got level zero, level one in some of these like uh, capacitor efficiency of like uh, or capacitor systems operation skills in them. So it's just so great how my uh, my my shields is uh, or my shield skills are not that good. But I'm still able to tank quite decently. So if you had the good skills, oof, this would be like absolute steamroll. You can maybe even put like a capacitor battery or something like that, but I think the capacitor booster is a lot more safe. Feels like the capacitor boosters on the uh, capital ships are like I'm very, as I said before, I'm very new to capital ships, but I feel like the capacitor boosters are a lot more useful on capital ships than capacitor boosters are on like sub capital ships, or at least the, the cap batteries feel a lot worse on the capital ships than they are on the sub capital ships because hardly get anything from the capital cap batteries. They just take a lot of power grid. Okay, I think this is the last wave. I wonder if we can get a super carrier spawning because I've seen someone say that they spawn in a carrier or super carrier, Rodron boss. They can spawn in, so I don't know if maybe they could spawn in as the last wave. It'll be interesting to see if we could get one of them to spawn in. Yeah, okay, we've got some warp scrambling going on. We've got warp scrambling going on. So they can have all the types of e war. This not as much. I feel like in the abyss we have a lot more e war going on, but here there is e war, but it's not as crazy. It's also because there's probably because there's fewer NPCs as well. It's li less likely to have a lot of e war going on. It's, it's not too bad though. I mean, we could just selectively take out the scrams if we wanted to warp out, and that'll be it. But in a dreadnought, it wouldn't matter anyway because we're just locked here for five minutes in this. Siege module. Okay, we're soon finished. 34 seconds left. I'm curious what kind of loot we get. We started at 9.07. So almost 20 minutes. So basically like a full tick almost. You can think of it like that. Oh, one thing to keep in mind is that the bounty is a lot lower. We've got bounty risk modifier 32.2%. So we also have to do a bit of calculation to see what we would get in like a more optimal situation. We could like assume it's like 100% or something like that. Because we would get three times more bounties than we would get now. Oh, wow. We'll get a turn of bounties. Okay, there we go. Finished. Is this finished? What is it? Doing anything? Look at this animation right here. It looks pretty cool. It's severe moving around. Oh, there's still NPCs. Maybe this is the final wave. Final wave. It's quite cool, the animation on this beacon, at least. <laughs> okay. I think after this wave, then it will be done. Then this thing will explode. Because when it explodes, you can scoop this like loot that you find inside of it. Because I think you're doing this, like rogue drone research. So you research, like, research some specific new technology. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Gone. The speed of these torpedoes. Crazy. I mean, a golem... A golem would possibly be able to do this if you had like really good uh, bling and max tank. But I mean, 5.4k HP per second is still nothing to mess around with. It's, I think it's going to be hard for a golem to get this. And even then, we're not even going max tank. We've still got full application DPS in the lows and rigs. And a lot of like two target painters as well. So it's definitely more tank that can be had with this. Definitely more tank. I think maybe like a max tank golem might be able to do this. But I mean, you would have to have a capital ship nearby anyway because of how you have to have it to deploy these. The last NPC right here. Okay, he's gone. Is there one here? Oh, he's warping out, I think. Is he warping out? Yeah, there he is. He's gone. Oh, hey, goodbye. What do we get here? Oh, what is this? Some spe Oh, one billion. Let's see now, medium drone navigation mutaplasma. Ooh. So this is, I guess, a rare drop right here that we got a million. So if we got 141 million, then I think that this would be then... Okay, well, we finished this in 22 minutes. Took okay, it 22 minutes. We'll see how much we got from the tick. 
141 million plus this. This is a rare drop, so we kind of ignore this. But 1 billion, oof, that's, that's good. I mean, if you were consistently able to get these, then you would be able to pay back your Dreadnought in a relatively short amount of time. But I'm sure that this is not something you get every single time because I didn't get this last time either. Okay, let's see now. 141 million in 22 minutes. 141 divided by 22, multiplied by 60. 384 million is canal if we were to get this kind of amount of rogue drone infestation data we got less data last time so i think that this was like a bit on the high side because i think i'm guessing it's like the abyss you can get sometimes high amount of this zero point condensate you can sometimes get all tri triglavian survey data in the abyss you can sometimes get low amount of triglavian survey data it varies a little bit but i mean this is a decent amount of isk you can earn more than this from doing t6 abyss but this oof this man absolutely crazy and it's a medium or exigent medium drone navigation mutoplasmid. So let's see now. They're different types. Exigent. And we have to also take into consideration we're going to get the bounty tick soon, hopefully. Ooh, okay, I see what this is. This is not a drone navigation mutoplasmid that it like it is for like the drone navigation computer. It's for the drones. The drones themselves. You can like modify the drones <laughs> so you can get like a super drone. It uses like the mutoplasmid on a drone. You see here, it's, this is a light one. So if we go for this one here, use with Vespers and that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. What about the heavy one? Can it be used on a gecko? Oh no, it can't be used on a gecko. It'd be cool if it was able to be used on a gecko. <laughs> Can you use a fighter ones? No. Ah, that's unfortunate. I think it's a bit strange though that you would use a billion isk to be able to boost a single drone. But I guess if you went to the Abyss, it could be a thing because you could boost a couple of set of like these uh, medium drones on the Gila, you get big damage bonuses. How much damage? Damage modifier, 10%. Okay, 10% is still decently though. I mean, it is a bit of a risk, but I mean, on a Gila, you buy a couple of these, boost your drones, and if your luck is on your side, you could maybe get a bit of, uh, a bit of uh, like extra, a DPS. Uh, so hopefully not everything else is bricked. A firepower mutoplasmid. Oh, this is a firepower one. Oh, okay. So I see, I see. So these mutoplasmids, they depend a little bit on like what their focus is on. So this firepower one instead is guaranteed to give more firepower, for example. And then if we do durability, it's guaranteed to give more durability navigation more navigation etc oh that's quite interesting actually quite interesting imagine if you get zero percent <laughs> okay so it was only 29 million isk tick it was um not that much 29 million isk so we'll put that into our calculation right here so the majority of the isk is from this rogue drone infestation data okay so we'll see here 22 oh, 141 plus 29 million divided by 22 multiplied by 60 463 million is gonna okay this, this is more than t6 or about the same as t6 cruiser abyss it's decent and then you can get a little bit of extra on the side when you get these mutoplasms as well i think it would be good if these are like a not obscenely rare but i'm guessing they're not obscenely rare because the second side i do and i've got one of these but it could just also be that i'm very lucky as well but anyway there we go more crab sites in the phoenix i really think that this is a cool ship for this i would have liked to do in a revelation but the phoenix i think is also a very cool dreadnought as well hopefully in the future when i get capital ship skills this will be one of the first things i do in capital ships <laughs> anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please leave a like and subscribe i'll catch you guys later